correctly. <laughs> well, certainly you're right. The, uh, the concept of God has given the world much beautiful music, many beautiful works of art, and certainly I feel God exists, but the name for God, of course, is uh, different for many different people. We feel that there is no reason why these people shouldn't just flip the coin completely over and simply call themselves what religion has called them for many, many years. Call them devil worshippers or disciples of evil or Satanists. Of course, it's very hard for a person to hang an uncomplimentary label on themselves. We perform human sacrifices by proxy, you might say, the destruction of human beings who would, let's say, create an antagonistic situation towards us in the form of curses and hexes. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Live with Lake of Warden. I'm not exactly sure where my co-host Brett Keen is, but if any STS members wishes to join me, they know how to get in. So, uh, <laughs> we're glad to be here tonight. We got an interesting topic. Weirdos. I don't know about most of you folks, but I have in the past had to deal with my fair share of those individuals who, for one reason or another, one might call a weirdo, a strange one, an oddball, the damn kook down the street, who knows? I've had to deal with plenty of my fair share uh, throughout my life, and especially since becoming a little bit popular. Uh, one particular weirdo that STS has to constantly deal with is a, and I'm not going to promote him, I'm not going to show any screen caps of him, but uh, uh, he's a troll over on Twitter, and uh, he's, it, this guy's weird because he has all of about 15 followers. He thinks that he, he's making any sort of real impact with us. Yes, the only real impact he's making with us is the fact that we're aware of him, only because he brought himself to our attention a while back. And uh, by copyright infringing us, and well, as you know, we hit people with copyright strikes all the time. Well, th this idiot, he, he's constantly posting memes about me and you know, he posted pictures of my son. He stalked us. Um, he stalks me all over the place. And it, it's pretty funny because uh, one of our grotto masters, our Tennessee grotto master, uh, is currently working on a van. Uh, and he's working on a stealth van for himself and his wife to go out and, you know, maybe attend certain STS events and have a place to sleep where, you know, they don't have to worry about a, uh, a hotel room and this idiot it, 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 he just sees that our grano master posts pictures of it and is talking about it on the sts facebook page and he immediately assumes that it's me who's making this van and it's like no i don't have a mechanics bone in my body I, i've done a few things with cars but i, I ain't gonna be restoring any car um let alone making a stealth fan i mean they're cool as shit and i told them listen now that this idiot seems to think that i'm the one doing this uh you gotta i, I told him like johnny johnny you, you you got you gotta pimp this shit out now you gotta turn this thing into like a gotham garage type vehicle and it's funny as shit because you know <laughs> this is this guy. He he keeps on trying to attack me, attack me, attack me, and we we're pretty sure we know exactly who he is. We're pretty we're about ninety percent sure, and uh, you know, 
he, he's constantly like saying, oh, no, 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 I'm not that person. I'm not that person. But, uh, you know, all the evidence has led us to this person. You know, we boot this person out of our forum groups and immediately all the, you know, posts that were going up about every little thing that we did in certain places suddenly stopped going up, even though we're, t we're putting up test posts left and right. Just see. Uh, is is this going to go up? Is is he going to notice this or whatnot? Is he going to talk about this? And uh, you know, nothing shows up. So then we immediately know, okay, it's this person. We know who this is. So and, and that's pretty funny. And uh, the fact of the matter is, is this guy is not getting any traction. I think this is like one of the few times that I've ever mentioned him out in public and like i said i'm not going to promote him i'm not going to show him screen caps i'm not going to give him any sort of labeling i'm not going to state his screen name whatever um and because i'm not just i'm just not going to give him any of the the uh uh recognition he so craves and uh it's funny uh that he just keeps on pushing it's the epitome of ignorance, stupidity, and maybe even a little bit of insanity. And that's just one of the more recent ones. We've had to deal with some pretty interesting ones in the past that have tried to join STS or been involved with STS. We've had former cult members from various cults try to join us, and that, that was pretty interesting. Uh, we've had people who've had some very intriguing ideas that we're sitting here going like huh H how does that work so yeah oh uh, oh yeah <laughs> the one character back this was back before sts was around this was back before um we were actually an organized thing we were just a small little meetup group in maryland and we had this guy and he came to stay with us for a while and he had gotten this girl who was also part of our group knocked up she was an oddball herself she she was coming from seventh day of Venice, and so she was doing the whole rebellious thing and he had gotten her knocked up and we eventually kicked this guy out of our house. Now, you want to talk about a weirdo. Um, generally speaking, he was a nice guy. It's just he wasn't, he wasn't there. He wasn't there upstairs. And there was an instance where it was a very scary instance because our son, he was in the living room playing. And our ritual chamber was in the basement then because this is up in maryland and i'm working in the kitchen i forget what i was doing now but i turn around and here he is standing in the basement door buck naked covered in blood his own blood um and he's trying to commit suicide as a form of sacrifice to have the baby aborted to to cause a miscarriage and it's like what no 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 you can't be doing that in our home you, we're not going to help you doing that and we called the police we called paramedics and everything and he had taken an extension cable he had put it over one of the cross beams in the basement and he had tried to hang himself by that and he didn't do it right he wasn't doing it right he had tried cutting himself open uh, the guy was bare butt naked. And I don't know what he was flying on, but, you know, we, we called law enforcement. We called everybody up and, you know, I was like, hey, we need emergency services out here. We got this guy I'm trying to pull this shit. And it was, I felt really bad for the police officer because they had to see the scene where he was doing this. So we had to take him into, uh, we had to take him, take her. She was a young rookie police officer. I think she had said this was only like her second day on. No, no, it, it, it was actually her first day on the job. I remember her saying it now. 
I knew it was less than a week, but yeah, she, it was literally her first day on the job and she had to walk into our ritual chamber with me to see this shit, <laughs> what he had been pulling. And I felt so bad for her. She looked, she was an uber Christian. She, she just looked like was a ghost walking in, seeing the trap bath on the wall, seeing our altar set up. And it, it was really, really funny. <clears throat> I got my girlie here. She's bringing me some coffee. You remember that instant? I sure do. Yep. <sighs> Shielding our son from the teeth. Mm hmm. Mm. Hang on. <laughs> you go to take a sip of coffee and you've got no sweetener in it so yeah <clears throat> i don't know where my normal uh co-host brett is and uh so the lines are open for any sts members or if i know you you can come on in uh if you are one of our members and i just need something to stir yes. with <laughs> Uh, if you want to come on in and join the conversation, if you're an STS member, you know how to get in. Um, yeah. Uh, pretty much. I'm just going to go ahead and grab this. Thank you. And... All right, so I just put out the link on Facebook and YouTube. If you are an STS member, if I know you and you want to join me on the show tonight, you are more than welcome to do so and to share with us. Ah, of course. I recognize this individual. Hey, I'm a mess, all right? Relax. Oh. Ow, shit. Shit, <laughs> No, don't worry. I had my earphones up, and you just like, oh, wow. Sorry about that. No, you're good. You're good. How you doing, man? It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. How you been doing, man? Uh, try to work, make some money, try to study, try to, you know, reach my ultimate tool, et cetera. That's how it always goes. That's what we all should be doing. Mm -hmm. I just try to study as much as I can to improve myself a little bit better, and yeah, there's always a lot of strange individuals I've encountered so many times. Yep. So, anything new going on? Uh, trying to find a better job so I can make, you know, better money so that way I can have enough to even get a credit card so I can even get a loan to build up the credit score. Uh, I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. But I, I, I'm going to warn you, don't fall into the trap of credit cards. Yes. You know, the intro, you know, mm -hmm. That's something that even we're struggling with is tr credit cards, they are a money pit. They are. They are, yes. You know, they make it easy to get things in your own, but a lot of people, they don't realize you got to pay that money back and you got to pay mm -hmm. it back with interest. And if you get too deep, you deep in a hole yep it's a bitch to get out of oh, and unfortunately yeah. there's been times when we've been forced to use credit cards ourselves to pay for certain things yeah and well we're still paying them off yeah that sucks like it's just like fuck dude it's like how the hell am i gonna keep, use a credit card without using about that you know shit, i can't even speak without force speed forced to use it yeah and it's unfortunate because our society is is all about that. You know, it's you all about I looping us into being, you know, dependent on certain things and, you mm -hmm. know, being trapped into a cycle of not, not being able to grow, you know, financially. You know, our, our society is based on the notion of, you know, the American dream and becoming something bigger better and more but yeah, at like the same fun. time it's also designed to hold us down hold us back yeah it's stupid it's like i'm trying to make money so that way in the near future i can even find a house to form my own coven in the near future yeah uh, and that's one of the things that we generally were 
require before you hit fourth degree in STS is that you have to be financially stable. I'm going to be right back. I got to let my dogs in. No Give worries. Me two seconds, help. folks. Mm -hmm. All right, peeps. Now I'm basically the host. So I have a lot of weird encounter with people. Like there's this one guy that I know from YouTube. I did a counter and he's like, he's all over like the different lores of different lol cows. If you wonder what lol cow is, it's something you don't want to be on the internet. So when most lol cows, they will have a tendency of freaking out towards trolls. Now with different trolls are different. So some lol, like lol cow trolls, they like to target people who are, not as self-aware as they think they are and very egotistical. Like there's one I know I actually did was on his live one time, like a year ago. Probably some of you know who he is. His name is called, he called himself the Tony, the black dragon. And what did I miss? Oh, I was talking about like this one guy that a lot of people <sighs> be familiar if they're very into like the low cow universe that I did encounter it, and there was a lot of stuff about him that's documented on the internet. Okay. Mm -hmm. His, like, like, a lot of people know him, they <laughs> are familiar with the white Bowser stuff happening, like, a year ago, because I was around when this times happened, so his name is, his. he likes to call himself called Tony the Black Dragon, and he seems like a nice guy at first, but when you really get into the deep like, there's this incident back in the day where he went to a mall and he took pictures of underage girls. Ooh, not cool. And also, and there's another thing. He had a friend who gave him a hard drive, and what it has in there is CP. And what he did yeah. the hard drive, his grandmother threw away the hard drive because he said it's not important. And, like, there's an entire documentary about this dude. Yeah. And every oh, low cows I watch, they're always weirdos. Like I've seen a lot of weirdos on the internet. And I've encountered I've seen a lot of like the most infamous one is Christian. Now what is a low cow? A low cow is a term for people who are basically are I'm sorry, I'm old. I don't always catch on to these uh near you know bad names or whatnot. Yeah. I try to like, explain what low cow is because I am familiar with a lot of people who are low cows. Those are like people are basically milked for their actions. So the most of you know is they freak out on you know camera when they're told you know criticizing uh, them. Okay, yeah. And and majority of them are very egotistical and narcissistic. Very right. egotistical, and not all of them, but some of them do have. Are on the autism spectrum. I they always don't... consider ninety percent of them to have some sort of mental health disability. Oh yes, they do. Yes, and some they always have, and they're not self-aware. So one of the examples that the most documented person on the internet, there's like an eighty-five part documentary by a channel called Genial Samuel Two Point One, a con comprehensive history of Chris Chan. It's like he does like a deep, thorough dive onto his life and. Oh boy, he's been documented since 2007. Gotcha. Have you been keeping up with that Her Hannah Barron chick? She's called the Catfish Girl. I think I have. I've been mostly been focusing on like Dark Side Phil and <laughs> Wings of uh, she, She's hot. I mean, don't don't get me wrong. She is smoking hot. She is a Southern Alabama girl, and you know. Oh, one of her big shticks that she does is that she goes catfish noodling. And for those people who don't know what noodling for catfish is, it's where you get in the water and you find a hole, or sometimes people put boxes down in there, and you reach in. You can either reach in with your foot or, more commonly, you reach in with your hand and you see if there's something in the hole. Mm. And... Uh, hopefully you'll find a catfish and then you let them bite you. Ah, yep. And you drag them out. Now the problem being with this is that sometimes it ain't a catfish. There's Ooh. a risk that it could be a gator or mm -hmm. any other number of nasty critters that are in there. But mm -hmm. most of the time it's a catfish. And you got to wrestle this damn catfish out. There's pictures of her hauling catfish out as big as her. And I tell you what, she is 
totally gorgeous. She's this tiny little Alabama girl who can hold her own. And I tell you what, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't want to go fighting her. I mean, she wrangles fucking giant ass catfish bigger than me out of oh, fucking yeah. holes. And she's got this Islamic Muslim uh, chick on Twitter who's somehow gotten so obsessed with her calling her a tomboy saying that she's a fake female and all this other shit uh you know and it's like what the hell and she's oh, right yeah. on hannah and i feel bad for hannah because i i understand where she's getting at because you get this type of idiot coming on and this is the sort of idiot that most uh, anybody who gets into the public eye, be it on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, um, you get famous for something. And it doesn't even need to be very much. Uh-huh. And you get idiots like this coming out trying to destroy your reputation for whatever reason. Uh-huh. And, you know, this, uh, w- w- I don't, I can't even remember. It's like Saria. Um, Saria Khan or something like that is this name of this woman, and she doesn't even live in the states. Hey, uh, yeah. she doesn't even live in the states, and she's attacking this Hannah Barron chick. And mm-hmm. the, this whole woman's claim to fame is her looks and how much plastic surgery that she's had while living in Dubai. Mm. Or, one of those Dubai bling type girls. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting here and she's sitting there saying that this Hannah Baron chick is not attractive, that guys don't like tomboys. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, she's hot. She's hot. Mm-hmm. And I would go with her a lot sooner than I'd go with one of those Dubai bling girls. Mm-hmm. Because She's down to her. She don't need to put on makeup to look good. Yeah, it's all about the natural beauty. And that's yeah, that's it. I mean, a lot of Satanists love the natural beauty about things, but it that's you know that's a kind of one of the weirdos that most of us have to deal with. So oh yeah, me, what what sort of weirdos have you had to deal with? I've dealt with a lot of like. There's this one person I used to work at my old job. It was a gas station, so. Like, the right off the bat, I could definitely tell she's kind of on something because the way she was acting. And then all of a sudden, she freaked out because she locked her car. And she was just running over, like, right all over, trying to find, like, a like a coat hanger to unlock the door. And she was just panicking. I'm just like, whoa, I feel like you're on crack or something. <laughs> like, she was just going around. It's like, jeez. And, of course, I dealt with a lot of kids who are just being, you know, trying to act tough and stuff. And it's like, come on, kids, really? Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, uh, that's what I don't get about modern society is we are in a society that promotes overacting, overreacting to situations that mm-hmm. you really shouldn't be overreacting to. You get mm-hmm. yourself into a problem and the – the standard response right now, the standard response that we're being, that our next generation is being conditioned for, oh, even the generation that's out there, you know, your generation. Yeah, my is, generation. Yeah, the generation that you're part of has been conditioned to is that if something doesn't go their way, if something's not working right, their response is to be like, <laughs> If somebody's talking to them, does. they don't agree with it. It's like, ah. oh yes, a lot of <laughs> a lot of liberals scream. <laughs> yeah, the liberals scream. I mean, it's like it's cringe. Uh, what the hell? I mean, and it's unfortunately not just your generation. You got people coming from my generation and the generations before me that are going down this whole woke liberal rabbit hole. Yep. And it's like, what the fuck? It's like, exactly. It is when like a Trump won fuck. the election the first time and he beat Hillary, that that famous video of that woman and yes. she's like my age and she's yes. just like, no! 
I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's like, what do you got to be sorry about? You voted. You did your part. You don't like Trump. Understandable. Why are you apologizing? I was expecting her to be in the Star Wars scene. I'm surprised that we haven't seen that be get riffed by any movies or anything, but we probably will within the next 20, 10, 20 years, because it seems like the whole woke, get woke movement is finally dying down. I mean, it started I'm up. I'm so glad. It started up. What the hell? Is that Who your is cat there? again? No, it's my dog. Oh, like I have a dog too. She scared she's herself. She knocked over a broom. Yeah, I had to, before I was on here, I had to take my dog outside so she could do her business. Yeah, yeah, but uh, go like lay it, down, guys. Yeah, it did start when Trump got elected. That's where it really just got. It, it, it started a bit before it. it, yeah. it I want to say it started a bit before it, and we started seeing this shit. <laughs> Uh, Sarah, if you want to come on in, you and I both know each other, and you know, you know where the link is. I'm pretty sure the link should be somewhere where you can see it. Um, I put the link in the uh the description comment yeah. section, yeah, in the, in the comment section, just click the link and come on in there, Sarah. Um, we're always welcome to your type of weird. I mean, come on, yeah. she's hot. <laughs> <laughs> Me, I'm weird, but I'm not like a total weirdo going to like, oh yeah. Oh, I like to see. You're just weird. hyper. That's all. Um, it's better to be hyper than being a weirdo. You know. Uh, but that's fine. You know, everybody has their moments. We all have our moments. Hell, you have your own moments. <laughs> but that makes uh, it great um, though, because the audience, they just like, yep, that's a funny moment. Yep. <laughs> but like Sarah said, you know. Uh, she thinks that she's a weirdo. She clicks so fast that whenever she sees me streaming, she's been a fan of mine for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. She is a sweet woman. I've spoken to her before, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. But uh, anyways, <clears throat> what else? I mean, let's see. there's a lot of interesting movies coming out here soon too. Yes, and I... people are getting weird over movies too. And you want to talk about weirdos? We got in September. We have the ultimate weirdo returning to the movies. Oh, oh boy! Who's going to say his name? I'm not going to say his name. Come on, we got to say his name. Anybody want to say his name? Beetlejuice. 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 Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Michael Keaton returning as Beetlejuice. Have you seen the promo for it? I really do want to see the promo because I really want to see the classic coming back to the society. And did you watch the original? Yes, I've seen the original. I love <laughs> that shit. Michael Keaton is returning. And they have Winona Ryder. They have the mom from the first movie returning. And I think it's all really good. It looks really good. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, we don't have Gina Davis or um, I forget which Baldwin was in it, but they're not. I don't think that they're returning, but we do have Michael Keaton coming back. We have Winona mm -hmm. Ryder and we have the mom. And now we also have um, what's her name? Please Wednesday. I'm going to kick my my own ass. I'm gonna... mm -hmm. We have her, her coming. Uh, yeah, derp. I'm having a dirt moment, folks. My, my, my roots are showing. Okay, that just sounds so flat. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So, and what do you what did you think about the original? It's a it's funny. It just shows you know, hey, it's good to be comical for a while. You know, I love the hyper. The hyper of you know the Beetlejuice character just going crazy. I love it. Yeah, it's showtime. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to seek and destroy. Yeah. So, like I said, we don't have Brett on here tonight. I honestly don't know where he is. 
Yeah, um, I was like, and, and he was supposed happened? to be on. You know, he, he. I think he canceled his show from last night in order to do tonight's show. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, Sarah can't join us. Yeah. She has to in like five minutes. It's our so it's, it, it's fine. It's fine. Um. Anybody else who wants to join us, they can. If not, you know, it's perfectly fine. We'll we'll deal with what we got. <laughs> mm-hmm. You hold me, hotties. All right. But um, so tell us a little bit. Tell us another story about a weirdo that you've encountered. I've encountered so many weird people on you know like social media. There's like, oh yeah, you want to see you know my pick? I'm like, oh jeez. Pose up, pose oh, up. Yeah, oh, luckily I always just block them. And of course, I have encountered a lot of these Illuminati scams coming at me. I was like, come on, guys. There it's was like, this one on. guy. This was way, way back in the day. There was this one guy that I knew. And he would. He was like an adult male. Mm-hmm. And he lived with his dad and his brother. And we, you know, I was, me and my roommate at the time, we were between homes. So we were staying there for a while. And this guy, for whatever reason, he would walk around most of the time in a diaper. Oh, geez. That sounded like pampered. Now, too. mind you, he did not have a an adult baby fetish. He did not have any of those fantasies. He was perfectly cognitive. Uh, for the most part, he understood how to use the bathroom. He he had all of those faculties about him, but he would choose to walk around most of the time in nothing but a diaper. Jeez, I thought Nova Online is bad with that, with his age regression. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then there was the brother of the guy who we were staying with, who we ended up having to kick out. Um, This guy, I don't know... This is something that I just don't understand why people would let themselves go like this. Um, this guy, he was perfectly fine mentally. No, no, nothing wrong with him. He suddenly just gave up on life. He, he literally, all he, all he would do is just collect his disability checks and then just stay in his room smoking cigarettes all day. He wouldn't even bathe. Oh, he was geez. covered. He was covered in body lice. He was covered in scabies. He was covered in parasites. And it would he was the kind of guy that we would have to go in and drag him out of his room and th- throw him in the shower, literally, and force him to bathe himself. Jeez. It got so bad. Finally, you know, I, t- I-, I talked to... The guy who whose apartment we were staying in, and I'm like, Butch, listen, you got to do something about him. This is, you know, we don't mind living on the couch or anything, but this is bad. You know, we can't. He stinks, and he's bringing parasites and all this other stuff, and he needs help. He needs mental help, and we don't know what's wrong with him. And so he 302'd him, and the moment that the cops came and took him away we all went in there, cleared out his entire room. We were like, listen, he he can't come back. Uh, we scrubbed his room down. We sterilized it. We bleached it. We did everything that we could to it. Uh, we took the mattress out. We did not, no, we didn't want that mattress at all. It was covered in all sorts of crawling creatures and things living in it. And we were like, nope. We took that shit out to the dumpster, and you know this this will lead into another weirdo story, um, involving the damn dumpsters of the place. This is in Wilkesbury, mind you, and so there's plenty of weirdos up in Wilkesbury. Mm-hmm. Um, so we got it all cleared out. I think the only thing that we saved from his room that we wanted to utilize was. The bed frame. It was an all-metal bed frame. We bleached it. We scrubbed it down. It was good to go. 
we got new mattress, new box springs. We brought all new stuff in and, and we were good to go. We took over his room. Damn, but, man. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it was nasty. We opened up the place and it stunk. I mean, he hadn't washed his clothes in months. He hadn't. He was pissing. He was shitting in bottles and in trash cans. He wouldn't even leave his room to use the bathroom. Oh, jeez. Sounds like he's trying to, what, solitary to find himself? I don't know. I, I really don't know. Jeez. All right. See you, sir. Sounds uh, like... That was like really nasty. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and we don't know what was gone going on with this guy. Uh, he, uh, you know, we understood that. I don't even know. Like, like you know, I we understood know. that he, there might have been some sort of depression. Like a girlfriend of his had passed away, but according to Butch, he he was like one day he was perfectly fine, then all of a sudden this is how he started living. It was like what the hell? That's all a bit like, bipolar, a little bit. Yeah, we didn't understand it. But anyways, the, the, the story leads into another weirdo story. And, you know, we had thrown the mattresses and the box springs into the dumpster. Now, the apartment building that this was in had a really bad habit of somebody lighting up the dumpsters and setting them on fire. Oh, pyromaniacs. Yeah. Um, the funny part is, is that they lit this, they lit it up. And the mattress and box springs went up this time around. And so we go out there, me and uh, Butch's sons, even the one that normally wears a diaper, I'm like, dude, throw some clothes on and give us a helping hand. Because he was a big, strong kid. Um, he was a man, but he was still a kid. He did have a little bit of a child like mine, but he, he was fully there. He was definitely there. He understood what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And... We go out there and we're like, we have towels wrapped around our hands and baseball bats and whatnot to just try to push this dumpster away from the building so it doesn't catch the building on fire. And uh, this one guy, he's like, he comes out of nowhere. I don't even know where he came out of. And he's like, I'll put this thing out. And he literally jumps on the rim of the burning damn uh dumpster whips his dick out and starts pissing on the thing <laughs> like what the fuck <laughs> he is balancing <laughs> on the rim of this dumpster <laughs> with it in my head. and he's got like a lake going I mean it, it's like a fire hose it's like what the fuck <laughs> the fire department pulls up and they see this they're like <laughs> What? <laughs> Sir, you need to come down. You need to come down. We'll, we'll put it out. It was absolute hilarity. It was absolute hilarity. That was it just was. pure meme right there. <laughs> it was. It was. <laughs> we finally got him down. I'm like, are you drunk? Are you high? And he's like, nope. I just wanted to piss on it. <laughs> so you have to imagine when you see a fire, just naturally just take a piss on it. Wow. You, you see a dumpster fire, you naturally want to piss on it. I can understand that. I mean, I want to piss all over the Star, Star Wars sequel trilogy. Same. But, you know, I'm not going to hop on the rim of the burning dumpster just to whiz on it and possibly fall head over heels into it. I mean, I'm, I'm just not that suicidal. But this guy did. You know, but he just sit there. Singing a tune, taking a whiz. I can see that in a movie scene of a horror film. <laughs> uh, it, it's just like, uh, but that's you know, I just you know, dealing with weirdos. We get a lot of people coming to STS mm -hmm. who they have, well, you know, Satanism is not a religion for what we would call normies, would you? No. Not even close. We get some real winners in Satanism. I think in a lot of religions, there's some real winners. But, some wingers. Uh, wingers. <laughs> but, uh, you know, 
Oh, of course. I have to have the special guest. Oh, that's a huge here's, your new, here's your new co-host. Here's your new host. Here's the new host right here, folks. The cat, the black cat. Nicodemus. Nicodemus. You got anything to say, Nicky? He's all wrapped up in the wire. He's like, nah, I just want to cause trouble. Always. Nikki, every time, every down. time I watch it or come on here, I just hear him just fuck some shit up. Yeah. <laughs> every time. So, does anybody in the comment section have any interesting stories that they would like to share? Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead, and normally I wouldn't do this, but because we are, we don't have very many, uh, we don't have our normal guests, we don't have, we're, the show's not really going very anywhere. If we don't get anybody coming in within the next 10, 15 minutes, I'm going to call the show. Mm -hmm. um, um and we'll try it again another time. But uh, does anybody have any interesting stories from somebody weird or about what a person that they would consider a weirdo? Please share it with us. The link is in the comment sections. I'm going to throw the link up again. And um, there's the link. You can jump on in. As long as you're not going to be a weirdo on camera. <laughs> yeah, I guess that I'll be now we're just documenting the story on camera. Yeah, yeah. And you know, you can come on in and you can tell us your story about somebody who's a weirdo. You know, um, unless you're going to, if you're going to do a strip show for us, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> if you're good looking enough. Yeah, if you're good looking enough, yeah. I would, I would get my dollar bills to go and rain in money. Anyways, uh, one of the other, you know, we had another weirdo living up in Maryland, and she was our neighbor. Oh. Now, you wanted to, now this, you want to talk about the woke weirdos who always, you know, <clears throat> I don't understand these oh, people. Oh, yep. I have some friends who were, are like that. And, like, this one friend, like, she was, like, a friend of mine. not going to say her name out loud. So she used to be my friend. Like at the time, I was kind of like that at the time, but until your book actually kind of redirect my decision making better. So mm -hmm. anyway, like recently, I've been hearing from a friend of mine, part of the, you know, post secondary mm -hmm. program. She work she works at a restaurant, and all of a sudden, like her and her boyfriend start like just staring at her while she's working. I'm just like, what the fuck? Like that is so. Like creepy, just seeing them just stare at you while you're just doing your job is like, what the actual fuck? And I'm hearing them, it's like that is just not normal. That's that's a weirdo right there. Okay, now this is interesting. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the about the weirdest thing as I have ever done is kept yellow jacket wasps as pets. Oh, geez. Yeah. They not the whole who, slide. who wants to keep a yellow jacket as a pet? And Mess this is something that wants to sting the living shit out of you. <laughs> That's definitely odd. But, you know, if it works, if you can, if, you know, if you can manage to pull it off and care for them. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I've heard of plenty of dangerous critters being kept as pet. You know, technically, you know. You know, cats, dogs, they're predatory animals. We keep, we have a snake here, all predators. Mm -hmm. And predators tend to make the best pets, you know. Mm -hmm. But so, okay. And plenty of people keep bees. Yeah, bee farming. Yeah, my friend of mine actually does have bees, but he also has a bee farm, but also they have eggs too. And his dad actually makes like homemade, you know, kombucha and wine. Cool, cool. I tried uh, a friend of mine up in uh, or down. This was up in Virginia when I was much younger. I was about 13, 14 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, he ran a wildlife preserve for the International Wildlife and Panda Ooh. Conservations. Yep. I say fish. Uh, yep. Um, big, you know, he specialized in the predators. It was a predator preserve. And uh, one of the things that he did for training to make sure that people 
wouldn't freak out when they had to go into a tough situation with one of these big predators because they had everything from wolves, bears, big cats, and even Komodo dragons. Since you had to keep your head on your shoulders in some of these really freaky, scary situations mm -hmm. in order to get yourself out of there. Um, one of the things that he would do to test you out on the side of his house, going up the whole side of the house, uh, all three stories of the building was a beehive. He actually had it enclosed in glass. It was a giant beehive built onto the side of the house. And in order to qualify to work for him, you had to walk into it. You had to walk into it, and you were surrounded by all these bees, and they'd be landing on you, and you couldn't swat at them. You couldn't freak out. No, because that's just going to make the things worse. Uh -huh. Now, you could choose to be in a bee suit, and he recommended most people go ahead and do the bee suit, but you can choose whether or not you wanted to have your hands exposed. Um, and the more experienced ones could go in without the bee suit. All they would have to have is the hood on. And me, I, I did the bee suit, but I left my hands exposed because I wanted to feel these guys walking around and uh, see if any would sting me. And I wasn't going to react to them. I wasn't going to swat at them. And so I walked into it. And I tell you what, that was a scary situation, just walking into this giant beehive. And the sound is absolutely amazing to hear. Uh, it's just this droning buzz coming from all around you. And you see these bees. And your hood, it's no farther than this from your face. So they're practically flying in your face. And you've got to remind yourself you've got this protective hood on. Uh, this mesh hood that's keeping these guys off of your face. And they're landing on your hands and... Uh, crawling around and, you know, are they going to sting you or not? Mm -hmm. And I didn't get stung. You know, I just I just held my hands out and just kind of, I spent like 10, 15 minutes in this hive. And it was, it was one of the most interesting uh, things that I ever did. And he had me collect a bit of honeycomb and we went and we harvested the honey from it because these were major league honey producers. I mean, you literally had the honey dripping off the comb, and there were thousands of sections of comb. So you could, if you knew what you were doing and you were careful, you could reach up and you could break off a little bit of comb. And I tell, when I say a little bit of comb, I mean, it could be about freaking a foot long, two feet high, and you could walk out with it, and the bees aren't going to freak out over mm -hmm. something like that. Um, it was really interesting. And so I, I got to work there because, you know, I was calm, cool, and collected. It was that's where I, uh, I've been bitten by several venomous snakes during the, you know, milking process. Uh, most of the time when, uh, you know, you know, most of the time when you get bitten by a snake, it's because you did something to provoke the bite and you weren't paying attention. And I got I got tagged several times. I got a scar on this wrist from a death adder. The fangs, these things, fangs are like this long. And they're independently moving. It went like two inches into my wrist. Um, oh, I can't say two inches, but it, it went pretty deep. It felt like I got hit by a hammer. Mm. It, yeah. it, it, it don't feel very good. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, it, I was lucky. It was a dry bite. He didn't envenomate. Oh, yeah, that was really lucky. Yeah. Uh, we had, I've milked, I've handled multiple different types of venomous snakes from that place, and it was really interesting. I've also fed vampire bats. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, that takes a little bit of courage because that one you're deliberately letting an animal that a lot of people are scared of. Could you please not beat up the things on my desk with your tail, Nikki? <laughs> Okay. Get down. Oh boy. Yes, do that. What does he do immediately? Hits the camera. <laughs> He's trying to sabotage the entire podcast. All right, trying to make it interesting. You know. Yeah.
he's trying to make it interesting, but no. Um, so we we had these vampire bats that we were repopulating, and one of the things that we were trying to teach them to do because this was this preserve was for when these animals they were being they were there to go back out into the wild, and which <laughs> knock it off, cat. Dagging my butt. Cat's bored. <laughs> Talk about a weirdo. This is a no, weirdo right now. This is a weirdo <laughs> that I have to deal with all the time. <laughs> but no. Um, so we're, we're we're sitting there, and you have the bat, and it's in this tube, and you got to put your hand in your in your hand. And so you're letting this creature land on you and you're deliberately letting it bite you. Yeah. And it hurts. It, it, it's going to take its front incisors and it's going to scoop. It's going to make a small scoop of skin out and it's going to start drinking blood from you. Mm -hmm. And you got and you can't react. You physically cannot react. You can't pull back, you can't jerk, you can't do any of that. And it's really interesting because it hurts at first. But the more the bat drinks, the less it hurts. And the bat's saliva has an anticoagulant, so the blood won't clot up. But what it also has, and this is something that most people don't realize, and that it's not often talked about, it has a mild numbing agent, a natural numbing agent. So it stops the pain for whatever it's feeding from. So the, the creature just simply, it won't hurt. It, it's the craziest sensation because as it's feeding and it'll stay there for like a good couple minutes just drinking from you your hand goes numb you can feel the bat on you everything else, but where it's bitten goes numb it doesn't hurt anymore very interesting actually it, it, it really is Copperhead snake. Wow. Now that's one hell of a snake. Yep. Leeches also have a numbing agent. Oh, it, yeah. it, it is, it's very interesting because, um, and Kelly, if you want to come on, you're normally in the comment section of the show, so you can come on and you can talk if you want, but we're probably going to wrap this up in a couple minutes because no one's really here tonight. And uh, that's fine. You know, you get like close, he is so. not here at all. Yeah, I don't know where he is. Yeah, it is weird because like he's usually on normally, and I just dropped my pick anyway. Yeah, but um, he's always here. It's like where did he get on? I, I I honestly don't know. I don't know, but uh, I hope everything's okay. Uh, he had a bit right of a mild medical emergency the other day, so or last that's week. Understandable. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, you know, it, here in South Carolina, people can keep venomous snakes. Uh, I know that they were talking about cracking down on that, but they about venomous reptiles that they could keep. But we got a few people here who have cobras. Uh, we know a woman who has a couple rattlesnakes, and that's all really cool. Jack's um, got a rattle. Yeah, that's not fun. Oh, uh, I, had to do, I had to do a Pantera reference. Uh, but uh, no, getting bit by any pit oh, viper yeah. is not fun because, uh, like I said before, the death adder, which is an Australian cousin to the American rattlesnake, they just don't have the rattler, um, they have a very similar venom. It's a necrotic venom. And I even got bitten by a timber rattler once as well. They have a necrotic venom, and literally, your flesh starts to rot. Oh, yep, I heard about that, yep. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, your, your flesh literally starts to rot off of your bones, and, yeah, it's bad. It's bad. And we ha they sell a type of snake here who... If you get tagged by, and it's a type of pit viper, and it's a gaboon viper. Ooh. I don't know if you've ever heard of a gaboon. Yep. These son of a bitches, they're like this fat around. Mm -hmm. And 
they are lightning quick, but they're sold because they're supposed to be very tame and placid. And what most people don't realize is, no, you're just not getting into their line of fire. And then they'll sell these damn things to kids. Oh. The, there is kids who they've sold this type of viper to, and it's called a kaboon viper. And these things are absolutely huge. And they're very similar. They're an African pit viper. And they're very similar to the puff adder. And that these things have literally two inch long fangs. Oh, yeah. I, I, see want, their I want people to realize that that is a fang, literally the length of my finger. Of a thumb. And they have two of them and they can move independently of each yes. other. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this thing, it, it, when it strikes, it's a blur. It is lightning fast. And it hits literally like a sledgehammer and if you get tagged in an arm or a leg you literally have 30 minutes to get anti-venom not even 30 minutes because your best bet will be amputation that is probably what's going to happen because your whole limb is going to rot off and that's in the best of situations even if you get the anti-venom so um, not most people, it, you're dead the moment this thing bites you. You're dead. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I heard about those snakes. <laughs> Beautiful, but damn. Oh, 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 they're gorgeous and their camouflage. Oh, is, yeah. They are, they are very gorgeous indeed. Yes. Uh, their camouflage is damn near pristine. I, I love the pattern on them. And if you put them in leaf litter, you lose the snake completely because the camouflage is that perfect. Oh yeah, it, it, it's absolutely, um, it's crazy, and they're absolutely gorgeous snakes. I love them, but I'm sitting here going like, what sort of a weirdo gives a fucking nine year old a gaboon viper? A gav a gaboon viper. What's that? What's next? They're gonna sell what well, they're gonna sell other venomous creatures as well to kids. Yep, yep, they do. We have a guy here who literally and he's a teenager and he's one of the area's um most highly regarded herpetologists, and that's what people who keep reptiles are called is they're herpes or herpetologists. That's a weird name. I've I heard know. them refer to the, each other as herpes, and it's like it's a virus. <laughs> No, oh. they're not. They're not refer referring yeah. to it. it was yeah, I know. It's um, like it's weird. Yeah, it, it is weird. But um, you know, and this guy, he's one of the best ones in the area, and he specializes in venomous. He's got all sorts of cobras. He's got oh. copperheads. He's got rattlers. Um, I've wanted to meet him and maybe do an episode with him for the longest time, but it's never happened. Um. He, he, from what I understand, he's a really cool kid um, and just absolutely amazing with these snakes. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm going to put it out there, you know, to people, don't go playing with snakes you've never met or you don't know anything about. I have a pet snake myself. It is non-venomous. It is a ball python. And it is completely friendly. But I've also been around snakes that will tear your face off. That'd be cool to meet your pets. That'd be really cool. Yeah, well, yeah, your STS, you know how when our events are, and you you'll know when events are going on here at the house. So one day you'll have a chance to. Yeah, and plus tomorrow is the is the high mass. Yep, tomorrow's high mass, so people can join us there. Can't wait um, for that. Actually, we will be doing our Ohio event. We will be having a black mass up in Ohio for while purchase not. So I don't know if you're going to be making it up to Ohio this year. I hope, it, though. It depends, though. Well, you we got about a month or so. You got about a month, two months, a little bit less than a month, yeah. Or no, you got a little bit more than a month. I mm -hmm. should be saying it's like it's about a month. Yeah. I can't believe I've been here for six months. Yeah. yeah. That's a no, it's been longer than six months, has it? I joined since, like, I think it was September. Gotcha, gotcha. 
Well, no one's showing up. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. It's been mm -hmm. about an hour. Um, even though nobody showed up, I mean, we had a great conversation. And um, it was really great having you here. Uh, for those people who might have stayed with us this long, if you want to support STS, um, go on down in the comments or in the description. And you can either buy some of our books our magazines the new uh club and hook magazine is out for sale this is a the old one we haven't gotten a new copy in yet it's on order it'll be arriving soon so uh, you can find the link to the new to the ninth uh, you know ninth issue down below you can also find a link that'll take you to buy the satanic testament down below buy um, it yep thank you <laughs> and uh we, we actually appreciate that. Also, go ahead and donate. But before you donate to STS or the Cult of Cthulhu or any of that stuff, I want to talk really, really quickly um, about a music school that I am a big fan of. And I tried to have one of their music videos on tonight's episode to help promote them. Um, I am a I've been a huge fan of these guys for the past couple of years. And I love what they do with kids and the talent that they bring out in these children with music. It's the O'Keefe Music Academy. And I'll be doing what I can to promote them in the next video. But if you can look them up on YouTube and see some of the things that they do with these kids. Um, I posted a video on Facebook earlier about them. I, re I reposted it from YouTube. And it was of a nine-year-old little girl doing Du Hast by Rammstein. Oh, I seen the, the post on X. Yeah. And it, it's it, she's just absolutely amazing. And I was gonna do a video, I was gonna sh a share a video on here from a you know from them of an eight-year-old little girl doing freak on a leash by corn. Mm. And it's just like, whoa, wh wh what the heck? And they, they've, got, you know, they've got all sorts of interesting videos. So go check them out on YouTube. Uh, check out some of their older videos. They've done older videos of like Magic Dance from the movie Labyrinth, and then uh, stuff for the movie Legend uh, with Tangerine Dream and everything. And mm -hmm. just absolutely amazing what they do with these kids. It's absolutely amazing. And they've got a fundraiser going now. They're trying to raise something like $25,000. And they've only got about $1,000 in. So, people, um, if you want to show these folks love and support for what they do with kids, go donate to them before you donate to STS. Um, I really encourage it because what they do with kids is absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely amazing. So... But uh, that being said, once you've donated to them, you can come on over here, buy my book, any one of my books. You can find most of my books on uh, Amazon. This is the Black Grimoire. You can also find that there. And, yeah. So uh, anything you wanted to add, uh, Devin? Right now I'm just trying to form my own black metal band so that way – just promote the great Eva. I'm just getting <laughs> reactionary sometimes. Well, you, you know, we have a guy who, who promotes uh, black metal. Lately. Oh, yep. And, yep. I know. Yep. yep. I know that. Yep. You can, you can always talk to, uh, yep. talk to him and, uh, he's, uh, yep. uh, killer build productions, mm -hmm. Brill yep. productions. And so, so you can always check him out and, uh, yeah. Well, with that being said, folks, I'm going to play a uh, quick ad, and we are going to go ahead and get out of here. Thank you all for joining us tonight, for those who have stayed with us. I yep. wish that we had more people uh, joining us tonight, but unfortunately, you know, it was a little bit of a bust. Anyways. Oh, yeah. what did you think of the thumbnail there, Devin? Badass. <laughs> I, thought it, I thought it was a fun. I had fun making that fun now, thumbnail. All right. Everybody, you all have a good night.
For over a decade the Satanic Testament has garnered praise and hatred from the Satanic community. It has been heralded as being written with class and style and carrying on the legacy first established by Anton LaVey by its fans and reviled by Koss and TST critics for its no-holds-barred approach. Lugiverdin doesn't just strike the hammer to the anvil he shatters it completely and levels the complete force of the black flame to blast wide the adamantine gates like never before. Take a look into the world of Satanism's lesser understood and spoken about topics. Was Anton LaVey really an atheist? Is there actual sex rights in Satanism? What is the actual satanic political view? Do Satanists actually support abortion? What is the Lex Satanicus? This and so much more are within these pages. Now let Le Giverdin, along with a few surprising guest authors, take you on a guided tour of the infernal world of Satanism.